Welcome back to, I think it's our 15th episode of Window Shop with Car and Driver. Uh, this week, we are joined by Alana Schur, one of our new contributors and columnists in the magazine. And uh, once again, John Perley Huffman is visiting us today to show off what he's found on the internet. Today's challenge is about special editions and special trims, trim packages, um, designer packages. Uh, we left it sort of open-ended. It can be weird. It can be something you might want to buy. Um, so hopefully we'll find some interesting and fun cars to talk about today. And we'll let uh, Mr. Joey Caparella take it away. Okay, so I found something. I'm, I think it's pretty rare. Um, this is my first car. It's a Porsche Boxster. And it's what's called the 550 Spider Edition. Yes. So yeah. this was like a this 50th anniversary, celebrating the 50th anniversary of the iconic 550 Spider. Um, it's got special wheels. Yeah, it's GT Silver exterior, which was yeah. a paint a sample, super expensive color. And then I went the press favorite, Joey, I got the press launch for this car. Oh, this you is were? the car you modeled our long term after. Yeah, I built a long term car. You're that, old. Was a, that was a nine. That was a <laughs> nine eighty seven. <laughs> My favorite part is the uh, brown interior. I just think it's so classy. Is that is that cocoa or espresso? That's cocoa. Yeah, cocoa. cocoa. Yeah. Cocoa and these came the over. What's the what's the difference between cocoa and espresso? I think it's the region you're in, Italy. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, but this, uh, this they're, they're spelled differently, Pearly. Well, thank you very much, Tony. I really appreciate that very much. You know, Mr. Kiroga, you know how to spell these things. Uh, I what I like that the taillights are all red. It doesn't have the amber indicators. Oh, that's cool. What's how, how, but is, is, is this, how, what's the price on this one? So this is over. I think we set a budget of 15. This is over. Oh, you're just over. But I like this. This is a it's beautiful. Really low miles. It looks this is a good, no, this is a good find. This is cool. What, what, is, what What's in the box for us in this generation? Is that still the 2.7 or? No, it's a 3.2 liter. 32, yeah. 255, I think, or 256 horsepower. So they're quick. They're legitimately yeah. quick. Yeah, and it's a manual. It's just Brown kind of subtly, subtly cool. Like, it, it doesn't stand out. It's not going to, like, attract a ton of attention. But No, but Porsche people know that car, Joey, yeah. for it's, sure. And I, think only about, I think only about 500 were in the U.S. It was, like, 1953 total to commemorate the year of the 550, but then about 500 in the US. So yeah, that was, one of, that was one of the first press junkets. That was one of the first press junkets I ever went on. Wow, lucky you. Jeez, oh, man. And then I got really drunk. I got really drunk and then had like a really horrible hangover. The That'll time. happen. Well, I'm glad to know you're representing your, your lightless well, Tony. That's good to hear. Well, I wasn't acting drunk. I just got drunk. That's what you think. That's what you always say. <laughs> yeah, I know. Because this was like second to last year, 986, right? Yeah. Uh, I think it was last year. I think 05 was the first year of the of its of the car that followed. Mm. No. Yeah. This is the last one with the scrambled egg headlight. 05 was the new generation. That's this is last year. This, this is the last year of the scrambled egg. The yeah, I guess it was 05. Yeah. Yeah, because I guess I guess 911 and uh, Boxster launched Boxster, the same year. Yeah. 997 yeah. and Boxster. Yeah. Um, this is in Miami, just under 20 grand, 81,000 miles. I'm, I'm pretty into it. Yeah, you gonna go get it? Well, I did just purchase a car, so I think this one's probably not on my horizon. Yeah, Joey, we don't just window shop, we actually buy stuff like you did. Yeah, I went past window shopping. <laughs> um, my next car. Oh, is oh. Uh, a hard body. You are speaking Pearly's language. Wow, oh, this is awesome. Sweet. Thank you're you. over again. Yeah. <laughs> um, you, have, you, have, you have expensive taste, Joey. I do. Yeah. It's over budget again. It's but it's awesome. so cool. How could that's, you not? That's qualified. Oh, that's so. God, Ivan Stewart was driving Toyotas back then. He was driving the Nissans when they were racing these things. I yeah, so it's like a Baja special package to commemorate like their Baja racing trophy trucks. Or I don't know if they're technically trophy trucks, but the Baja trucks. Is this Walker Evans or who's driving the Nissans back then? I'm not sure. I don't know. I know Shad Belch, uh, Alana, you know Shad and uh, uh, the Chevy PR guy. I think his father raced this kind of stuff, but I'm not sure if he raced the Nissans. Yeah, I think, was Rod Hall still in Dodges or had he moved? I think Rod Hall was in Dodges for a long time. I don't like, think he ever got up. He was racing the big Dodges, wasn't he? Yeah. And then, I don't yeah. know. 
them. I, sh I have to think about that. These are, but all, all these trucks from that era, from like the 90s and everything else like that, are so cool. They're just, yeah. they're just wicked cool. Yeah, it's pretty hyped. Yeah, it's the fender flares. The colors still look on this. Like, and those wheels are just like hallucinogenic. Is it paint or are those stickers? I think it's paint, but I can't tell. The hood's probably paint. I don't know about the sides, but yeah, the hood's a little different color than the sides. Was it re was it restored or is that a? Yeah, it's it doesn't really go into it. Um, it's got a lot of miles on it. It's like two hundred sixty thousand miles. I guess oh. it's, just bro it's just broken in. And they want nineteen thousand dollars for it. Eight. Uh, that's, yeah, that's been restored. Yeah, <laughs> it must be restored. But yeah, it's it's really got a you know. I guess it's not that many miles for the year, but still. These go forever. My roommate in college drove a four-cylinder one, and it had six-bolt wheels like this one. It was a base truck, and he would just slam it into curbs. He understeered into a curb, and the car was fine. The truck was fine. No, these are these are all these are all made in made in uh, Tennessee. Tennessee. Tennessee, right? Yeah. 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 yeah I think this is the first product they had. Wasn't this the first product they put in Smyrna? Yeah, '83. Right. They started building hard bodies in Smyrna, Tennessee. Yeah. So this 82 is 82 or 83. I can't remember. Which the, the only the only problem I have with it is is that I would rather have the extended cab so you could actually fit in it. Yeah, I don't think they made the Desert Runner in an extended cab though. Right. This is yeah. back when pickup trucks were pickup trucks. Yeah, regular cabs and eight foot beds here, buddy. Yeah. It's, it's an awful it's, a, it's an awful lot of money to spend for a truck that's got manual roll up windows. Yeah, it's pretty and basic. Two hundred sixty thousand miles on it. Oh yeah, yeah. It's very basic. Love it. I think it's worth it. <laughs> you, you're never going to see another one. Uh, well, which engine is in is in this? Uh, you know, turn back to the door panel. Did it, this? Is, I think they've changed the. Uh, I, I don't think it has the original uh, window winders. So I. You know, really right there. I think there's a black window winder on a gray on a gray door panel, and that's. Just and I want to see what that hat says. Does that hat have a Mint 500 thing? <laughs> what do you want to see? The, the door Mint 400. See, see, it's gray on that side. It's a gray door handle. It's a black one. It, on the door. Yeah. And it's a do it's a dormant part. It's a dormant part. Don't worry about it. Wow! Yeah. Look at that eye. Yeah. <laughs> so you know that just shows that it's not original. I just you know for my collection, I just could not accept that sort of. You need you know, yeah. You're right. That's a that's a fail. Door handle fail. What's the hat say? What's the hat say, Joey? I can't quite make it out. Is it a Nikki Lauda reproduction? Nissan Mint Four Hundred. It is a Mint Four Hundred. <laughs> The Mint 400. Oh, wow, that's so cool. Yeah. I have a friend who had a Frontier Desert Runner from later on, and we used to always joke that it was called the Dessert Runner because we would just go get ice cream in it. <laughs> you, you lived the world's most wholesome life. That's really, that's a sweet story. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's charming. <laughs> no pun What's the engine bay look like? The, the truck, the hard body, and the Pathfinder had a shared owner's manual. I don't know the same thing. The Pathfinders of that era are so cool. Yeah, they really are. I, mean, I wanted one so bad when I was about fourteen. I wanted a Pathfinder. They're so cool looking. I went good. to I went to Australia and I learned about the Nissan Patrol, and then I was like, "Oh, I need a Pathfinder." But anyway. the original Nissan Pathfinder, such it's like the original the original Toyota Four Runner, is really cool too. And All right, Joey, is that your last truck or your last car? This is my last car. You had some really good picks over the. Budget. We, we should just awesome. spend like the rest of the twenty minutes talking about this thing. <laughs> Yeah, I, I couldn't pass it up, even though it was over by me. All right, Where? thanks, Joey. That's awesome. Um, let's move on to Alana. Alana, what uh, what cars have you selected for us? Um, well, I decided to be very strict and stick, like, very hard to the, to the line about designer editions. So I only picked cars that were um, designer editions. Actually, no, wait, that's not true. I cheated. I have one that's sort of, like, right on the edge of designer slash special. But I'm just gonna start with one, which to me is kind of like the quintessential designer car, um, which is, let's see if we can make this work, the uh, Pierre Cardin Javelin. Oh, yes. Ooh. Ooh. So. Um, Classy. You know, this picture, you can almost hear the rot. You can hear it. It's actually, the body's actually dissolving right in front of you, right there in front of the picture. So AMC in the 70s actually did multiple designer editions of different cars, um, including, I believe, um, a Gucci Hornet, which I could not find for sale, but I have seen one time. Um, well, but, like Cassini Matador. Yes. Yeah, for the Cassini Matador. The denim interior. Yes, and they did, um, they did the 
Cardan Javelin for like three or four years. So there's, as far as designer AMCs go, there's actually quite a lot of them to choose from. And uh, yeah, and they, you could get different colors too. I think they started out with three different color options and then by like the last year they had I think five different color options. So, you know, you got, you got a lot going. You've got very fine AMC small block in there. I hate four. that engine. So the 304? All, yeah. all, the AMC, all the AMC engines are small blocks. The 401 and the 304 are all the same. No, they're still small blocks. Yeah. Uh-oh, okay. what's going on there? Oh. That's part. That's blown in air filter. Yeah, I think that's probably uh, an extremely good filter. Really going <laughs> to do the job. It's just insulating the engine. Just keeping it warm. Um, you know, this, this, this may need some cleanup. Well, you know, it's it's a designer car for under, you know, under 15 grand. Actually, this one didn't have a price, but to prove that you can, in fact, buy one <laughs> under well, the- I believe this is less than 15. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I like the, I like the, I like the PR Cardan upholstery. Yeah. That's cool. Oh, yeah. That's psychedelic. This one was seven grand, but uh, for whatever reason, that's the only photo of it. So that- um, <laughs> That's all you need to know. Yeah. That's <laughs> fine so that makes it worth more they shouldn't have cleaned it up i always thought when i was growing up i'd see these occasionally and that front fender like uh curve always made me think these were front wheel drive but they're definitely rear wheel drive oh look at that interior, interior is just yeah. so cool. Oh, it's cool and the the interiors were different colors depending on which color exterior you got so look at the door panel really oh, like yeah it. that's great have you ever driven a javelin alana i have ridden in a javelin but i don't believe i've ever driven one um, I've driven a Gremlin. <laughs> I've driven Javelins. What are they're they like? Good. Are they awesome? They're not awesome. They're, you know, they're the same as a Hornet, which is the same as a Gremlin. Uh, they're, you know, they're pretty, they're pretty primitive. The only, the, the best, the best Javelin you can only buy would be to spend a couple million dollars and get Mark Donahue's. That <laughs> headliner is spectacular. Yeah. Yeah, the headliners. I mean, that's a car you just kind of want to sit in. You don't actually need to want to drive it because it would ruin the illusion. You just want to. Sit there and look at it. Yeah. You smell it. Yeah. Well, it might not run, so you're in luck. It's something, See, that's to look cool it's something to look at if you're not on top. Well, you know, I got to give AMC credit because they were working with, you know, sort of everything stacked against them, and they still managed to be, I think, very interesting. So, you know. Well, what was, the, was that Marshall Teague who was the head of AMC Design back then? Uh, was it Dick Teague? Dick Teague? Yeah, Dick Teague. He was a... Uh, because, you know, these are the guys, you know, they took big, they always took big swings. You know, they didn't, they weren't bunting. They, no, you know, they couldn't afford they, to bunt. And for what, for everything they had on hand, they made the most, I think all on us right, they made the most of it. Because you're talking I about. For cash upon pickup. <laughs> I, like, I like the part where it says, um, critters have had their way with the wires. <laughs> <laughs> and the air filter. Uh, not wrong. This is a very good ad. As soon as you turn on the HVAC, I'm sure you just get hantavirus. Oh, you get something. I think probably as soon as you open the hood, you get hantavirus. <laughs> Good point. Does it say that the AC blows cold? All right. You buy All right. What, what, what's, your, uh, what's your next car, Alana? Oh, what? You're, you're done with this? How could yeah, you I'm done with this. All right. Okay. So my car is... Let's see if we can get this. Moving right. Oh, my God. Frank. Sinatra. I knew somebody was going to come up with this. I, I was looking for it and it turned against it. So the, the Frank Sinatra edition Chrysler Imperial, 6500 bucks in mint condition. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was apparently the color of Frank Sinatra's eyes. That's right. That's right. And, um, it came- Jack, you got to stop cussing. I'm doing a video down here. To professionalism. I got a jet going over, so... Um, first of all, obviously owned by a true enthusiast. They've got a wing car here, Mopar banner, you know. They, they love this thing. Wow, a giant Dodge badge over there, too. Unfortunately, there are not more photos, but the interior of these cars was also blue and came with a, a special tape cassette console that was full of Frank Sinatra's hits. Does it come, oh with, the, come with the tapes? It came with the tapes. Yeah. I, know the, I know the car came with the tapes. Does this car come with the tapes? No information. It only has 37,000 miles. It's brand new. Yeah. So. This comes from that era when the hunchback. No, it's not, Tony. Huh? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> brand new, not quite. 
This comes from the era with the Hunchback Seville, but they actually yeah, have this, a real this trunk is the on muscle back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is like the Seville. This is quite the design line choice right here. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's like the Seville, except they put a real trunk on there. Yeah, well, the thing is that remember they uh, this is this is essentially the same as a Dodge Magnum, which is the same as a Chrysler Cordoba of the era. Right. They just they, they just redid it. it. To me, it kind of looks like a smaller car crashed into a hatchback, and this. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know that you know that uh, Buddy Arrington raced these in NASCAR. No, I didn't know that. I've yeah, never no. heard that name. That's You've never heard Buddy. Alana's heard Buddy Arrington. I mean, I know the name, but I didn't know that he raced one of these. In what yeah, class? The Frank Sinatra edition? <laughs> Sinatra and probably did. He probably did race the Sinatra it was, it was the color of Buddy's eyes, Casey. Yeah. <laughs> Buddy, Ar Buddy Arrington. Bloodshot? This is, this is, you can paint a car bloodshot? Here's, here's a piece of trivia about the Imperials. The Imperial was the last Chrysler car to compete in uh, NASCAR competition until they came back in the, in the late 90s. It was uh, Buddy Arrington ran an Imperial, and then they left, and they were gone. They were out of NASCAR until um, I, when they came back with the Intrepid, I think, and what was that, like, 99. And then they left again. But the last car that was in, uh, in NASCAR was, a, was an Imperial before, when, before they left, and that was Buddy Arrington's car. And I'll find a pic, photo of it, and I'll show it to you. Yes, I would, I would like that. That is a good fact. That is a, that's a good party trick to pull out. I'm definitely <laughs> going to people the next time I get to go to a party. <laughs> Well, I'm never invited to party, so I have to use my tricks now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Alana, do you have a third car? I do, I do. Um, I actually have several, but Ooh. I'm going to do this one because um, I want to talk about interiors some more. So Ooh. this is um, an Eddie Bauer Bronco, which is not not moving through the photos for Bronco me. Bronco 2 or regular Bronco? Bronco 2. <laughs> um, all right, well, that's failing me, but... Is this, is this one right side... It up? Yes, it is. Uh, okay. And I didn't, I was looking for an earlier one because talking about sort of specialty interiors, the, the early Bronco 2 had these seats that have trees on them. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. I really want to find that material and like redo one of my muscle car interiors with these like tree and velour seats. So yeah, uh, they made Eddie Bauer edition Fords for like 15 years or something. So there's a whole bunch of them, but only the only the early ones uh, had the the tree interior. And I think there was also one you could get with maybe stripes, but that's not as good. So yeah, it spilled into Explorer, which was essentially a lengthened version of the Bronco too. And Expedition had an Eddie Bauer. Yep. So did, so did Bronco. So did the full size Bronco. And so, I think there was an F-150 Eddie Bauer too. And I, uh, I did once uh, do a Baja pre-run in a sort of Bronco 2 pre-runner Eddie Bauer edition that, that a guy had put together. And um, it, yeah, we're good. And we only did it three times, but it was fine. Did the exterior have any changes to it on the Eddie Bauer? Two-tone, wasn't it? Um, well, on the Bronco 2. It did on the... Explorers <laughs> were two-tone. Cream. That's um, cool, those trees. I've never seen that. I've never seen that... Uh... The pattern tree motif that's well, very seattle i'm very glad to share that with you guys that was um you know it's been something that's stuck in my head um and then i did have one i wanted to show you guys it's not in our price range but it's just so amazing um that i just want you to look at it for a second <laughs> this isn't in our price range how much this how is this is, yeah how is this not <laughs> what's a 77 it's um Oh boy! Oh my God! And it's green inside. How long do we think that is, Tony? What's the spec on that? Oh, one? it's got to be eighteen and a half feet long. Two hundred and twenty inches. Look. The oh longest, or, the longest product the Ford Motor Corporation has built that wasn't a, a plane. I love that thing. That is so. <clears throat> good. This is. I all I can hear is earth, wind, and fire right now. <laughs> I mean, you know, look at that. Like that looks comfortable. Yeah, I think not only have people been conceived back there, but they might have grown up like and spent their entire lives back there. <laughs> oh, this is the pillow. The pillows are just awesome. Wow, this thing looks brand Whoa. new. How much is this? It's already sold. Oh, uh, what is? Oh, 
Well, I have one that's not sold, so. Okay, good, good. So then I will, uh, I'll turn it over to. Uh, yeah, it goes to, I think, um, Casey's up next. So um, I, you know, started looking for special edition cars and I, I just couldn't bring myself to uh, um, promote any car I, I wouldn't own. So I kind of just went in and, and tried to find rare and, and odd bird things and, um, and remembered um, how cool some uh, old Jeeps are. And especially this, uh, this five nine limited, uh, which was just like a one year one year deal. It was kind of an undercover hot rod um, before people really making hot rod SUVs. But uh, but yeah, I am. Um, I, I always thought these were pretty cool. It was just like a you know bigger than normal engine. Uh, yeah, it was the five nine. Yeah, the five nine. Um, what's that? It's it's, it's the five nine Magnum, which was when they went to um, port injection instead of throttle body injection. Yep. So it's actually about as good as a Chrysler small block got before they went to the Hemi. Yeah, they got a massive yeah. power bump in like 92 or 93 when they did all that. Yeah, yeah, I yeah think it was like 245 horse, something like that. It sounds right. And a lot of and, uh, and it was like seven seconds to 60 in a time that like a quick SUV was 10 seconds flat. Yeah, my so. friend who is an engineer, he did an internship at with Jeep Engineering, and they worked on underhood temperatures. And so it has those vents in the hood. If you look at the vents in the hood. That's how yeah. they tackled underhood temperatures. Wait, let me. Oh wait, there's one right here. And just to show you these these vents, right there. Oh, just wow. to show you how well I know Tony, I wrote this down before we started. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? What's it say? This John intern story. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, Ben, too yeah, much. I don't. Sorry. And it's possible you guys spend too much time together. <laughs> We've known each yeah. other for a long time. How many miles on this thing? Uh, oh, this one, yeah, and this one, um, this was like 90 some thousand, and it's sold okay. for. It's a steal, 65. 90, 93,000 for like 6,500 bucks. And, uh, you I know, the interior, the interior is, is so dated. Um, but, yeah, it's not aged well. But it's other than that, way. this is I something I would it. own. And I also think it'd be it'd be really cool to like to get one of these. These are just like two stick axles to lift one and turn it into like you know some weekend overlander thing would be um, would be a fun project. It'd be a great place to start. I, I mean, remember for sure. I remember going to oh, sorry, go interior, but you know it's okay. I remember going to the launch of these, and the person I was with was Don Sherman, and all he did was try and badmouth it all the way through. Yeah. I don't know why I bring that up, but that's what he did. You interrupted that, that place. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, good story, Huffman. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> it's the detail that really makes it rich. Uh, I like how the badge on the back spells leader, L-I-T-R-E. Oh, yeah, because it's classy. It's your yeah, it's Canadian. Uh, where was that? I think that's how all, isn't that how, like, uh, all Jeeps were? Yeah, for a while. Yeah, four yeah. Liter, I think was the same. yeah like four liter on old Wranglers, like that old inline six. You know, as much as the interior may be dated, I still like the exterior of the first generation Grand Cherokee. Oh, yeah. When I was a valet, when I was a valet, I would get into these on a hot summer day, and for some reason, they would outgas something that smelled like garbage, like <laughs> carpets or something smelled like garbage, and every single one of them. And it wasn't like the cars were dirty; it was just something in the interior that would outgas. You know, the good was it just something about the Jeep owners at the time? No, I don't think so. I don't think because they were often very new. I mean, they were like one year old at the time, or or even newer. But, you know, the thing is that what's also good about these is that if it's a, it's a, these are a ZJ, right? These, uh, these kind of, I think that's what it's called. Yes. Is, is that it's not as popular as the XJ, but you can make these things, you know, they're big aftermarket support and you can make them run really, really good off road. And they, yeah. they can drive through the pane glass windows at Cobo Hall. Oh, that was a classic moment. That's sure classic moment. But, the, but they're actually pretty good off road. They're actually very good off road. Yeah, they're awesome. So I know, I know our, um, that one time we, we ran one of these in a comparison test day. There were complaints of the uh, the spare tire being in the in the cargo area and yeah, it limiting the uh, the the cases of beer capacity to just eleven. <laughs> Ooh, compact disc. All right, Casey. Jewel case what else, holder. What else? Okay. Uh, and then and then and then the other one. Um, and this is just because I knew how rare these were. I think they only made uh, oh wow. made two thousand of these. Giving it away, yeah. Um, Ooh, the, but, uh, and this is, this is over budget. So this is, uh, 
you know, almost 19 grand, but my average is under 15. Uh, but these are just cool, cool paint jobs. Yeah. Um, that's a cool that, car. That, that's a good car. I mean, it's the, the, the 32 valve engine and that is 32 valves 96. Yep. Yep. That's, yeah, a, just, that's a sweet car. And that's, yeah. the, that's the color flopping paint, right? Like, yeah. That was, yeah, yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a BASF thing, I think. Yeah. I wrote it down in my, in my cheater notes. Hold on. It yeah, was, it was BASF. It was an $815 option. Yeah. Um, Not that much. I remember when that paint came out, um, there were like two versions. There was the purple green, and then there was like a kind of um, like a yellow orangey one as well. Oh, there was? I didn't. I've only, I've no, only yellow to red, basically. Just, not, not on the Mustang, just in general, right? Yeah, yeah, just in yeah. general. But I remember, like, it came out, and it was in the, you know, 90s, so everything was, a, like, jelly bean bubble shape, and it looks pretty good because it kind of naturally moves from one color to another. I remember going to an, a car show and seeing it, an older car. I think it was a 67 Charger that someone had done that paint on, and it looked so bad because the, there's no rounded edges, so it just looked like it had some purple panels and some green panels. <laughs> was, I like it. I, well, that's only got 9,600 miles. I have the, the SN95 Mustang is one of my favorites. And uh, Christmas 1990. You want to buy one? I, I've been looking. To, I wanted one. I had it in 1994. Uh, uh, Christmas 1994. It's on a truck coming to you. Okay. Yeah, Not this know. one. But, uh, but I, in 1994, I took an SN95 Mustang from Santa Barbara to Encinitas, which is right about San Diego, on Christmas morning. And I did it in under two hours. And that was like an average, like 130 miles an hour. Yeah. And I was passed on the freeway. It's not two hundred. I was a kid. There was I had this VHS tape that was like showing how car factories work, and it was showing the this generation Mustang being built like from start to finish. I think I would watch it like every day. I will say that it looks like the the photography was done and it was foggy out, and that yeah. bothers me. Joey, we had a very similar childhood. <laughs> it kind of explains a lot, doesn't it? It does. What's going on here? That's awesome, Casey. How much? How many miles are on it? Only 8,700. Did I see that right? 9,600. 9,600. Yeah. It's clean. I mean, and, and, uh, wait, that's a fun car. That yeah, is a fun car. car. They fun sound car. great. I, did, I, did, I, I, I mean, I still have a GT of this era. Um, and they do, they do sound awesome. Um, yeah. All, they drift all. great. The transmission's a Tremec T5, which is actually a pretty good transmission. Right. It's a it's a blast. Those cars are way underrated and way underpriced for what they. That's are. pretty cool. That's such a. I mean, I wonder how rare the Mystic paint was, and they only did it for it was, like. It was, they, did, they made two thousand of them. It was one year. Um, uh, I mean, according to so, and I was just in researching this a little bit. Um, the. Uh, the the paint code. It was it was uh, the vins are. Um, there was a lot of control over the vins because to get the paint to have a Ford dealership touch it up or respray it or whatever um, so that there weren't copies made. Um, oh, it, was, it was tightly controlled. So, uh, but according to, and, and all that makes sense. And according to the, the Wikipedia page, it was, they made 1990 with leather interior. And, and then there were nine that were made with cloth interior, but something else said that they made 2000. So I don't know if there's one with no interior or something. But. There was a press car that was written off. Yeah, something like that. The, the one thing is, I never liked the seats of these things. The, the, you know, uh, the previous Fox they're Bike, horrible, and they all all these uh, the 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 twelve volt. So that's a twelve volt in addition. There's also another one, but that's uh, um, that little flap there. All of them break. So that and probably that bothered you went back when you smoked, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, no, because the ashtray the ashtray had its own little. There, there was a, there was another twelve volt in the car. It had a little cover over the 12 volt, didn't it? If I remember. Yeah, and that's what I was saying. That was uh, in this photo here. You can Break see it it's down. Yeah. That kind of like it drops down. They all drop down and, and, and are broken. The black on white gauge faces are so 90s. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. White gauges. And I'm guessing this cover is on here. Just, just to protect very, it. Totally. Very just to protect boys. it, yeah. Very pet boys. That's a cool car. Uh, and if you know me, you'll also know that I, I love Klein bicycles. and. They Klein used to paint some bikes in paint very similar to this. So oh, they large, tube, large tube clients with the uh, the aluminum large tube clients, so you know, like the mountain bikes. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So they, they did, it, they, and they called it Plum Crazy. Yeah. Um, and I always was like, they called the paint Plum Crazy. I'm like, don't let Chrysler know about that because yeah, don't uh, FCA they have that name now. 
Oh, well, they, they had that name. I mean, that was – it was the they were plum crazy Kudas and, I mean, yeah. Vultures and Chargers. It was all back in the, right. uh, in the 60s and 70s. All so, right, yeah. really. Cool car. That's uh, – Thank you. So that's, Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Huffman. Oh, hold on. Let's see if I remember what I'm doing here. Uh, share. There we go. Practice a lot. I, I'm not very bright is the major problem, dude. Cadillac right. Alante Mary Kay edition. Oh, boy. North Star, $7,500. I don't know how you get any better than this. <laughs> so you you know, Avon? It's, no, it's, it's, it's Mary Kay. The only way you could get a Mary Kay car, I wrote a story about this, is the only way you could get a Mary Kay car is that if you met, met certain uh, sales goals as a Mary Kay representative, and then they would be painted at the factory in the Mary Kay pink, and they came out to the color too. Usually when Mary Kay got rid of the cars, they paint them black, but some would leak out in the original colors. So, Pearly, you're telling me that they had to ship Mary Kay pink paint to Italy for these bodies to be painted. <laughs> I'm That's assuming, I, I, look, the Elantes were, only went to the very highest producers. Oh, I mean, I'm you, sure. They, they, yeah. they did two transatlantic journeys. They came <laughs> over, then they were sold, then they went back, painted, and then they came back. But, you, know, I, I, you know, the thing is, obviously, the head gasket in this thing has probably failed 15 times already because it's a North Star. But, does it say how many miles are on it? Uh, it says 81,688. Oh, there it is. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I guess, no, we're not the thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. The I don't know. But, like, you know, if, if you have the balls, if, so to speak, of showing up in a pink Cadillac Elante, I think, you know, this is, this is definitely a statement vehicle. So I when, thought you were going to make a Clint Eastwood reference there. Uh, well, he did have a movie called Pink Cadillac, didn't he? But, uh, he that was like a 59 or a 60 or something i know but this is this is i think this is just you know if you're gonna it's a 7500 hundred dollar conversation piece what were you gonna say alana <laughs> you mean 10 minutes ago yeah <laughs> thank so, you very much so um john you said that that uh, mary Kay would paint in black so were they just loaners to the salespeople? they weren't like you didn't own it you couldn't they sell were, it anymore? mary Kay would lease them for them and then before, before they're returning them, they they paint them black. At least that's what they told me when I did the story. And you know they moved on later. I don't know what they're doing now, but a few years ago they were doing uh, they were doing black BMWs instead of pink uh, Cadillacs because people didn't care about the pink anymore, but they cared about having a BMW. But oh, this is yeah. you know, this I was just I did have a friend that, that did Mary Kay and did get a car because she did well enough, and she did she opted not to have a, a pink car. Oh, you could opt out of it. Yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. but the pink the pink cars. The pink cars were something that, you know, it's a certain lifestyle that uh, I don't know if it exists anymore. I just, you know, a certain, uh, a certain opulence and a certain amount of, you know, Josh Gabor style of just. It's a bygone era. It, it really is. And this is probably the end of the era right there in that 93. I'd be blasting, this, I'd be blasting Aretha Franklin's Freeway of Love everywhere I went in this thing. But you do that in every car, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> So anyhow, shall we go on to the next one here? Yeah, let's see your next car. Okay, let's see. Well, uh, okay. Uh, this is the 1975 to 1977 uh, Laguna S3. It won the, this is Benny Parsons with the 1975 Daytona 500 winner. It's the slope nose, uh, you know, right here. The slope nose is the big deal, but there's also behind Benny's ass. But uh, you can see that he it has a closed-in uh, rear quarter window. They actually help aerodynamics too. And these things just slaughtered everything on the super speedways back in the 70s. They got banned in 77, so everybody switched to uh, Oldsmobiles. This is Kale Yarborough's uh, 77, which won, the, uh, which won the Daytona 500 in 77. Yarborough won the championship at 76, 77, and 78. The 76 and 77 championships. He's breaking won. up. You're breaking up, but I... I... Yeah, just keep going. The 76 and 77. No one's listening to this anyway. <laughs> We're going to cut it all. Where's the car for sale? And here's yeah, where's, yeah, is this thing for sale? Or Okay, here we go. I was, wait, 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 Pearly, but were those, were those race cars, were those tube frame cars at the time, or were they actually, like, somewhat production-based? No, they're tube. The production, yeah, they were tube. This is the production. Those are not production cars. This is a production car. That no, is the race car, race car wasn't. No, the, the race car wasn't, but yeah. I wanted to show why this is cool is because of the race cars. God. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and, uh, you know, this is, in the, this is at the Smoky Mountain Traders. See, see it, Kai. 
And uh, so this is a, you know, it's got the 400, only 43,000 miles on it. I'm so bummed that I don't have the original rally wheels on it because I thought the rally wheels looked better. But this is a, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a cool car that got banned by NASCAR. And, uh, you know, when cars get banned, they make, you know, that becomes the best limited edition. And Wait, what uh, kind of car is it? I, I must have missed it. <laughs> it's a Chevelle. It's a Chevelle. It's the, it, yeah, it's, it's the, it's the, um, it's the 73 to 77 generation Chevelle. If you look at the window here, you can see how they, they blocked everything off to get the best aerodynamics possible. And this is when Chevy wasn't, origi uh, wasn't officially in racing. The interior is kind of a disaster. I mean, in the, you know, you really have to be into red fuzzy things. Doesn't the seat swivel out? Some do. That's the, I think this one does because it has the lever on it. You see right. the lever right here? It like rotates, uh, right? It rotates out. It's good. There, for it's easier done. ingress and done. egress? Are you yeah, serious? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're swiveled out right there. Keep going. Here's another better shot. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I see it. I see it. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. And it's, these yeah. are just cool cars. And they're like the only, you know, of all the Aero specials that have been built for NASCAR, we don't think it's like all the wing cars from the 60s and the Monte Carlo SS Aero deck from the 80s or anything else like this. This is the one that's affordable. You can still find these at a good price. I want to see a crash test with this seat in it. You know, uh, it's funny that when I first saw Kale Yarborough up on your on your tabs, I was like, "Wow, you managed to find a Kale Yarborough, um, you know, Mercury spoiler two um, for under fifteen, But no, in fact, you found a later car. But well, though, he had this, he had the Mercury spoiler when he was driving for the Wood Brothers. The yeah, this car they made they made a production car that was a Kale Yarborough special that had his signature on it. Yeah, they also they also they also did a they also did a, a Dan Gurney special. They did, yeah, and. Uh, but uh, I think this car is very, very clean. Very, That's very clean. lovely. How much horsepower do you think this emissions choked 400 makes? Oh, like 240, 220? It's, not even that. it's a single, single exhaust, 400. 190. Uh -huh. it's, not much. it's not going to make the 190. It's probably down around 145, 150. And, uh, and, but at the same point in time, you know, that's not the point. This thing is, you know, it's, it's got heritage behind it. And I'm trying to remember what the price is. This good bit. Well, heritage is one thing. Actual performance is a whole other. Well, it's not like, yeah. yeah. Well, wait till we get whatever slow piece of garbage you have. That <laughs> <laughs> Counties are all going to be, are all going to be Indianapolis pace car. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, that'd be awesome. I didn't do that. Anyhow, this is a car I've always liked. It's a car I've always that I always think is a, just a great looking, interesting car. All right, next car. Okay, let's see. Let's see. This I is. Like uh, I went to the. Uh, well, I, I'm gonna skip over the designer Lincolns, which I had, which were all. There's the Givenchy. This, Givon this, the this I just want to point out that when they went to the Mark VI, they the actually put lights on the outside of the headlight doors. That's horrible. <laughs> that's fantastic. Wow. Yeah. So you know that is. I think that's the peak of opulence is when you don't have to open the doors, but you the do. Peak of the Baroque, yeah. Yeah. And, I, had a, uh, I had a Bill Blass uh, Lincoln on my list as well. Um, yeah. That was that I wanted to use just because it came in at fourteen nine nine nine. Yeah. <laughs> but I think the, I think the Mark V is a really pretty car. It's enormous, but it's just you know it's a really handsome car. The right. seventy seven and the the seventy seven is well. Let me go back here. I'll show the one I had in. Uh, I actually had the one for sale here. What's weird is the Givenchy has the vinyl roof on the front part of the roof, and then, but not on the C pillar. Yeah. Well, the best, the best of them was the. the yeah, same. it's like a, it's like a reverse. Uh, Look at the other one. Yeah, go to the ad with all four on them, Pearly. Okay. Well, this is. Yeah. This is yeah. <laughs> so weird. The front the back. Back it's the like a comb over. <laughs> <laughs> Well, once you once you got but once you got into like once you got into the, like the Bill Blasses at the end they had these phony convertible tops. Yeah, that's all fake. Yeah. Yeah, which is then this doesn't doesn't have the porthole in the in the in the C pillar either, which is just kind of like eh. God, that looks like that looks like the scene from Caddyshack. I just think <laughs> yeah. it's funny that they would ever do a fake convertible top because like I've never seen anyone say, you know what looks better than a hard top? A convertible with the top up. <laughs> Well, when, when, convertibles were there. Dead, when convertibles were dead for a few years, everyone had to pretend suddenly that they had a convertible. Yeah. This is, the, the pretend convertibles is when, you, when imagination ruled America. But so. I do, I do <laughs> want to known on this. I think the, like, the sort of back um, tire cover, yeah. that, that's pretty slick looking. The continental bump, mm -hmm. which didn't really hold the uh, – but anyhow, I wasn't going to do those because you – know, To your point, Alana, this car wouldn't be great for Mystic Paint. 
No. no. Yeah, <laughs> but, but, but the style of these cars, but this is a much, it's a much crisper style than the Mark IV. And it has proportions that they ruined with the Mark VI. Crisp. So, okay, then here's a real, real vehicle. I am a first generation Tundra guy. Oh, you love these. Yeah, this I have owned three. And, and you love uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, this is, the T, this is the T3 edition. And I think it's, you know, the good thing is, is not only do you get a limited edition, you actually get a truck that's very usable and great to drive every day. Yeah, this is so, good. This is you know, this, this is a bitchin' truck. And I love the wheels. The wheels are now, those are the same wheels I have on my Tundra now. But uh, they, this is the first time you could get them was in 2003 on this truck. I didn't see and this Terminator movie. Any of them? Want, and I have, no, I have just this one. Just the third one. Yeah. And then, it's and not then, a great one. No, it's a, it was a, let's see, where are they? Go back. What would you do? You think you closed there the it is. gun okay. laws? <laughs> are we going to watch? Let's watch it in its entirety right now. <laughs> but then speed it up so it's only like five seconds in the video. There it is, Tundra. The Tundra was the hero. Was it? Naturally. Well, how is that? What is the one? This is, you know, for guys who are Tundra fanatics like me, this is, you know, this is, this is the greatest movie of all time. All right. Actually, Jeff Mann, who was the production designer on this, on this movie, actually worked with Toyota to design the T3 truck, even though they used a different, a completely, they used the regular cab, uh, 2002 truck in the movie. You know so much about this. Oh, so the T3 truck isn't in the movie. They just made a version of it to commemorate the movie. Yeah, it was like the Star Wars Nissan Rogue. Okay. Yeah, the Star Wars, which is, I wish, I hope somebody has the Star Wars Nissan Rogue. <laughs> Star Wars, there wasn't even a Nissan Rogue in the movie at all. There's oh, no. Oh, God, no. But this one, this one, they actually had a, they actually had a Tundra in it. And they, uh, I remember talking to the guys at Toyota and they told me they had, they gave them 11 Tundras. Wow. How many they came back? Good. Yeah, none of them came back. They were all used up. And, uh, you know, I have a real love for these trucks, so I find that a real tragic thing. All right. Do. Are you done, Pearly? Well, can I show you the sprints? Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. 1972, the four sprints. These were all, these were built to, um, these were built to celebrate the participation in the Olympics, which used to be a sports festival held in the, in the world. And uh, they, they built these to, for 1972 Olympics. And uh, you can get these three. Here's one that is a sports roof, which I wish had the original wheels on it, but it doesn't have the original wheels, but it's cool. What and was here, special about the sprint besides the Olympic tie-in? Where just, was the 72 Olympics? It's just the Munich. Ah, that's right, yep. Yeah, and they had, you know, had, had, these, had this upholstery, it had the tape, had the, uh, the the terrible steering wheel that all Fords back then had. Uh, there's nothing that has a, this has a true dual exhaust. I think it's a 351 car. And uh, you know, I just think they're, I just think they're, I just think they're an interesting, cool thing. So you know, I, I'm never gonna. Yeah, and I remember seeing these when I was a kid. They also had the little badge at the back here. That's a sprint. Yeah. Well, no, it's a it's a U.S. it's a USA. Here you can see it better here. It's a USA. Oh badge. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It, 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 uh, red, white, and blue, like America thing. Yeah. Like there wasn't like a were there like an official stripes of the Olympics during those years or something? Like it's no, they didn't have they didn't have a licensing they didn't have a licensing agreement with the Olympics, so you don't see the Olympic rings or anything else here. It's just whatever they care. Isn't there a Buick that had a, like a like an yeah, Olympic? The, the Joseph the, Wood Buick Regal in like two thousand two. I actually found one of those. So those are nineteen eighty four. Awesome. I, I think they did it twice. I think they did it in eighty four for the eighty four is the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, okay. um, there was yeah. a later one in I think two thousand two for the Winter Olympics. Yeah, it could be. Uh, Buick, but Buick paid money to the Olympics to license the rings. So you can actually get a Buick with the rings on it. This one had this. You know what the cool thing is, is that if you buy this car in Canada, you got it the same car, but it had the Canadian flag in the back. <laughs> but it was still red, white, and blue? Still red, white, and blue, but it was a Canadian flag. And they got, you know, this is a, I just think they're interesting cars. And here's the uh, Pinto version. And this, this is the, uh, the Maverick version, which needs oh, a little work. You started off good, and then each one had gone to yeah. Yeah, I thought the cool the cool thing here though is I was this one's a four speed with a three hundred two in it, which could be a pretty fun car, and uh, so could be. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't want to spend any money on it. I don't it. think that'd be fun at all. <laughs> oh, I think it would be fun. 
No. To oh, hit garbage oh, cans. Garbage cans. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pearly. Is that it? Can you just give me one second here? What are you doing? <laughs> this is no time for you to be searching. We're getting a history lesson. Oh, oh he's looking at the more NASCAR. Oh, cool! It's a beautiful race car, actually. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, this is the Buddy Arrington. This is the Buddy Arrington uh, 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 Chrysler Imperial. Imperial. And uh, I thought I always thought these cars actually made. This is this is a Cordoba he broke, but this is a this is the this is the last car he did. And I thought that was kind of cool. They look badass from the front. Yeah, they did. They were cool. So uh, that's it. I'm done. All right, my first car is. What I think would definitely win Radwood, and I have an outfit to pick at, uh, to match too. It's the, uh, can you guys see this? It's the Fila Ford Thunderbird. <laughs> so it's my designer choice. Uh, let's see if I can get this window. Oh, there we go. Here are the other pictures. Um, they came in white. I think they came in gray and they came in black. You could get this interior or you can get a full leather interior. Um, they came with 140 horsepower, five liter V8. Just a cool. You sure that's a five liter. What's a four point nine badged five liter, Casey? <laughs> uh, they're just really bizarre and funky, and I don't know why they hooked up with Fila. And a good friend of mine, one of my best friends growing up, had a, had the coolest Fila sweatsuit in like nineteen eighty four, and I was so jealous of him. And so but there is no such thing as a cool Fila sweatsuit. Huh? Oh, there definitely is. Look at this. There was in nineteen eighty four. No, 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 no. Look at that. Yeah. No. No. Oh, that would yeah. be that badass. That's that's kind of that's kind of a full Bjorn Borg type of thing, isn't it? It is. I mean, that's exactly it. That's B yeah. Borg, uh, Bjorn Borg and McEnroe wore them. Yeah. So yeah, you put that jacket on, you drive up to a Radwood, and you win Radwood. I yeah. think that's what could happen in this car. Also, that's a pretty perfect I pair. Scott, Tony, um, I I always really like looking at what the you know what the car manufacturers felt was technology that was worth calling out on the car yes so like i've got an 81 trans am and it says four wheel disc on the door handles like so your passenger feels safe getting in the car with you and it doesn't it have the radial tune suspension badge inside and, um, you know i like how it says efi on the engine like yeah. so you know what we're looking at the other the carbureted ones said four v for four yeah. It's so a four barrel. Sad. Well, the, the good thing, the, another good thing about these cars is they're Fox bodies. They're essentially the same car as a Fox body Mustang. Yeah. So if you want to screw with it, you can really screw with it pretty extensively. Yep. And have you can fun. put some cool stuff into these for sure. Yeah. For sure. And I, I, I kind of like how clean the design is. This is a Jack Telnac car. It was, it was, it was incredibly, it was basically set the standards of NASCAR. It was a bullet. Cars of, this cars is better than your Laguna SS, Pearly. What's going on with that blue head cover? Well, you know, the funny thing is my, my, my Laguna, Laguna S3. Is that Fila blue? An S3. Laguna S3, not an SS. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. You don't really mean, you don't, you're not really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but these were great. The, the, I mean, these cars are, uh, they're, these cars were amazingly aerodynamic. And then yep. uh, they had, it was one of the first with the door that led into the roof. The door would go into the roof, as you can see the little curve here for aero. The interior is nothing uh, spectacular. <laughs> yeah, there's not there's not as much Fila inside as I want it to want to do. Right, you'd want a little <laughs> more in the upholstery, right? Eighty five mile per hour speedometer. Why does it look like graph paper? <laughs> uh, that's a very technical car. I don't like that. Highly engineered. <laughs> does it light up? It was just left over. It was designed on graph paper, and then <laughs> and then when they went to print it, they were like, "Oh, you left the lines on there. Oh, it looks cool." <laughs> I guess this is what they wanted. Yeah, that's what they wanted. All right, that's my first car. My second car, what's this? It'd be good if I knew what I was doing. Whatever. Oh, there's more. Here are the Fila ads. <laughs> is she wearing the sweatshirt? It's yeah, she looks like very similar. Yeah, she, is. Yeah, she <laughs> sure is. And then here's the white leather interior. Here it is with the, without the graph paper gauges, Joey. You'll be delighted to see. It's the, uh, the digital gauges. That's the, the optional speedometer. Yeah. Here's another shot with the cool jacket. I mean, look at that's a Radwood winner right there. Oh, the graph paper made it onto this ad, Joey. You'll be happy. <laughs> that was the theme of the Thunderbird. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, there's my search for all the ads. Um, uh -oh. <laughs> Bless you. Excuse me. 
That's not what I want. Oh, this is what I was just talking about. The yeah, the Joseph Abood. Okay, but I'm not going to present that. This is the um, 01 Mustang Bullet. So oh, it's cool. it's a tribute to the Steve McQueen movie. I'm not the biggest fan of that movie. I think it's really boring. And I don't really partake in the hero worship of McQueen, but I, I get it. But I remember driving this car when I was first starting out about writing about cars. And I was kind of blown away about how much better it was than a regular Mustang GT. They lowered it. It had a different intake. Um, it was a little quicker. It was a little louder. It had a different muffler on it. And it was just a really sweet, uh, late um, SN95 Mustang to drive. And it just felt really special. It was the single overhead cam engine. I think it had a few extra horsepower, like 10. So, and it was a three valve, right? Uh, yeah, it's the single yeah. overhead cam one, yeah. And well, then yeah, but I mean, like, early ones were two valve. And then he went three valve. And then this has, like, the same, I think, intake as the Mach 1 that had the, had the scoop coming out of the hood. No, the Mach 1, no, the Mach 1 was uh, the four valve engine. Was Mach 1 four valve? So was Mach 1 after this? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Mach 1, Mach 1 was 94, and it had the shaker hood. No, 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 no. There's a later Mach 1, Mach 1 this, yeah. from this era, yeah. really. This is no, new the, engine. The Mach 1, no, the later Mach 1 from this period used the Cobra engine, which was, wasn't a Cobra anymore, 2004. And it had the shaker hood. And had a convoluted. Okay, well, we're not talking about that car right now. Yeah, it's probably, and you're wrong, but that's okay. No, I'm so, right. And I can prove so it. The, the cool thing about the bullet is they removed that uh, Mustang GT spoiler, so it's a much cleaner look from the side. Uh, you got the cool torque thrust, the imitation torque thrust wheels. I don't know. I just really love these, and this is actually something I would buy. This one is 13 grand, so I'm under budget, only 61,000 miles. And this guy just listed it. They came in um, Highland Green, which was this color. And then you could also get blue, and they also came in black. But the vast majority of them were um, in Highland Green. But yeah, just a really cool Mustang from the era. Well, you not, know not a lot of money. What's also cool is, is that they changed this. You haven't talked about the C-pillar on the, on, the, on the SA95 Mustangs. They changed the C-pillars in different ways for different models. And I think, yeah. if I remember correctly, the bullet had a different C-pillar trim. Yep, you're absolutely right. I should be coming up to it soon here, Burley. Yeah. And then you got these cool looking like retro seats. Um, you got the metal shift knob and then the gauges are unique too. I think they shared these gauges with the, um, with the Mach 1, but they're kind of retro gauges. You know, lots of cool little retro touches like the seats and the gauges. There's the engine. Those metal shift knobs suck though. Like, oh, it gets so hot. So hot, so you get in there, you're like, um, and they, they just did another bullet edition recently, which like kind of didn't, it wasn't as good as this one. Like it didn't, it was really just like the color. And also it feels a little bit like, yeah, maybe, maybe we're all moving away a little bit from Steve McQueen hero worship. Right. They've done three have a long term. They've done three we? bullets. Yeah, we, we do have, have a long term right now. Thing. It's a nice package, but I agree that it's not as special or unique. Well, it's a nice, it's just a nice car, regardless of the bullet Mustang. connection. It doesn't also, need the bullet it, connection. It's also the color you'd want that Mustang in, even if it wasn't a bullet. The Highland Green looks really good on that Mustang. But yeah, here's the C-pillar treatment, Pearly, with the rear window. Yeah. It and got its, its own. It's, it's, it's just the sail panel that they changed. You know, it was just whatever they built on. Yeah. It's, yeah. And so that's, but, those, are, uh, those are my two cars. Weren't were the headlights smoked on this one, too? Did they change the headlights so yeah. they were like a little They might have a dark background. Yeah, they might be smoked. This guy yeah, you're right. License plate, Mach 1 was 32 valve. I've still been paying attention, Tony. <laughs> um, who went first? Joey, you went first. Which of your two actually excellent choices, but we're both over budget, I have to add. Uh, oh, which of those do you want us to vote on? I'll put up that Nissan hard body desert runner. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I need another mile truck in my life. <laughs> Alana, what do you think about that one? Thumbs up, thumbs down. I, I gotta say that's my favorite of, of the group. <laughs> All right. Um, and then Alana, which is your favorite, my favorite was the Tundra T3 Terminator edition. Oh yeah. Yeah, mine too. Uh, Alana, uh, which of your choices do you want to put up for judging? Um, I mean, you guys are pretty impressed by all of them, but uh, I think that of the three that I brought up, the actual cars, the the Imperial, the Frank Sinatra Imperial was. Uh, oh yeah. Pretty good I, I do it just blue eyes. I'm gonna say thumbs down because once you said that thing about the small car crashing into the hatchback, I couldn't unsee it. <laughs> <laughs> oh damn! Damn my uh, damn my skills with language. 
And then outside outside of your choices, Alana, what was your favorite? What do you think your favorite well, well, I already said, but uh, my favorite outside of my own choices was was that Nissan. Although I think everyone oh, had okay. choices that I was most impressed by. All right, Casey, uh, what are you putting up for judging? That beautiful mystic Cobra? Oh, yeah. Got to be. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, got to be. Cool. You're cool. Yeah. And, and yeah, and, and also my favorite has got to be that... Uh, that hard body. Yeah, that hard body is pretty special. The, the hard body, I don't, you know, the one thing about the hard body is it's got an enormous number of miles on it. And I'm not sure those desert runner pa- those desert runner graphics are correct. I think those are simulated desert runner graphics. I, I thought know. you were going to complain about. Have you been, have you been fact? Have you been? Have you been live fact checking, Joey? No, I think it's real. I I compared it with the original. I think you. I, I think you just don't like that window winder, Curly. <laughs> what drives me nuts? That's the deal breaker. <laughs> Dorman, to, Dorman them, sells them in black them. and gray, Pearly. That is a dollar thirty-nine part. All right, Pearly, you're up for judging. What what of your uh, beautiful choices? Please don't put up the sprints. <laughs> car, the, car, the one I would buy would be the T3 the Terminator Tundra. Yeah, yeah, I gotta reluctantly give you a thumbs up because you've made me fall in love with those trucks again. And those are real. They're, they're just and they just last forever. Yeah. But I would. But the one I really think is the coolest is the uh, is the Laguna S3. I give that one a thumbs down. I don't even remember which one that was. Yeah, they were uh, there were a lot of very big old cars that I was not familiar with. It was it was red and it had the seats that turned. Oh yeah. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Oh, that was kind of cool. Yeah, you guys. Oh, you, you mean the Chevelle? Me so old. Yeah. It made me feel. I, so I never got what kind of car it was. The so Chevelle. I got it now. Oh, uh, Pearly, what was your favorite car? Not to invite you to talk more, but what was your favorite car out of all of us? <laughs> If I was gonna, the car I would like to drive the most is actually the uh, the mystic colored uh, Cobra. Yeah, I, I I'm kind of that, that, that car is a fun fun car to drive, and uh, so I mean it's not the greatest car in the world, but they you know you can you can toss them around like nothing. They're just they're just they're just got the chassis just wants to go sideways all the time. It's a lot something of that was uh, that I that I forgot to mention that was in that mystic Cobra ad. Uh, it's still on the original. Uh, BF Goodrich cop TA tires. That's it. Small. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that only so that's got that's got like three revolutions of one burnout before they completely fall apart. It was under ten thousand miles, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was low mileage. That that that's just a, that's just. A, I mean, I know it's too expensive or anything else like that, but that would be a car I just like to drive. Just like to drive it again. Okay. So, we, hear you. Opposed, we heard you. Opposed, we heard you. Well, what if I have something else to say? You know, I we might come up with something. I might keep talking. I know. That's what scares me. <laughs> All right, I'm going to put up my bullet Mustang, although I did love the feel of T-Bird. Yeah. I was under budget, not yeah, crazy yeah. mileage. The color of the bullet's good. Two thumbs up on the SN95. Are you giving me thumbs up or thumbs down, Alana? Thumbs well, up. Well, I don't know. I'd much rather have... Yeah, okay, I'll give you a thumbs up. All right. Uh, that was me. Me, he said. Me, Pearly. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was me. He said Pearly. No, it's... She's a lot. Don't try to, you know, I'm, okay, go on. Whatever you All want right. to do. Well, that, that concludes another episode of Window Shopping. Thank you, Alana and, and uh, Mr. Huffman. For Wait, but which was your favorite, Tony? What's that? Yeah. You didn't say, I you didn't, which... Mystic Cobra. I love that thing. That's a strong choice. I, I, I would really seriously, although I really like Joey's um, special edition Boxster, but uh, too many miles. I liked yours slightly over budget, but super low mileage. Yeah, so that concludes another episode of Window Shopping, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, Alana. Thanks, Burley. Thanks, Joey. Thanks, Casey. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.